Hang on, it'll be back. Atmosphere. At the same time, whilst we're waiting for Joe to return, you can all hit the magical button as well, chat. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the content, smash subscribe if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification icon so you'll be notified every single time we go live or drop a new video. TV's in a slightly weird place as well. I'm we're sorry. All, we're all over the place right now. Do you want me to get up and so, do you want me to sort of fix it? It's just, I just normally it's towards me, but we've just sat down a second. No, I, don't, I can do it. It's exercise, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Um, <laughs> Normally, because I like to chat right in front of my eyes. This okay. us? Hey? That looks like us. There you go, that's Tick. Us, yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's us. Off we go. Off you go, Joe. Another adventure. I'm just working my on YouTube, you in yeah. Your Sorry. mic's low, apparently. Are, you, are low. you muted? I haven't muted it. Did you have it muted? Yeah. You, are you better now? Yeah, you, you muted me for some reason. Oh. I never press that mute button unless I'm going to the bathroom. I am the captain now. I am the captain now. We fixed it, chap. We fixed it. I right. am. Is that, is, that, is that okay for you, my That's lord? That's perfect now. Yeah. 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 There we go. We are all a tiz right now, chat. The reason why is because we don't normally go live at 6 p.m. on a Wednesday from the studio with the amazing, the beautiful, the sexual Joe. Mm. So had a haircut, look. I know. Did it in my, in my kitchen. Did you? Yeah. Well, I <laughs> did do it. My partner did it. But... With a spoon. Yeah. <laughs> um, Looking very beautiful, Joe. Yeah. Just got two, two bricks. Yeah, rubbed them. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Well, it's great. Uh, cool. Didn't do anything to the top bit though. Yeah. So we're a little bit all over the place because um, we've got those streams tomorrow. So we thought we'd do a bonus one today with the two of us. And I wasn't sure we were going to talk about, but Games Workshop kindly released another new AOS article for us. Yeah. And I sat there a moment ago when I when I scheduled the stream. And I was like, we could talk about 40k and yeah. rules in 40k and the current thing that's going on in 40k is custodians and orcs. I thought, you know what? I don't fancy that for a third day in a row. I don't really fancy that drama I had for a third long, day in a row. I had an hour long phone call with someone complaining down the phone to me about custodians. Yeah, I, later, I, so. didn't, I didn't really fancy that negativity and that whinging for a mm. third day in a row. And then I looked and GW have released a brand new article for new AOS. So I thought we'd cover that instead. Our plan is to be with you until about seven, half past seven. So you've got about, about an hour to 90 minutes of us, right? Chat? That's enough for three wees. What I said, it is, yeah. What I said at the start was... If you haven't already, please make sure you smash all those magical buttons for us. Hit the like button if you enjoy the content. Smash subscribe if you haven't already. And hit that bell notification icon if you'll be notified every single time we go live. Or drop a new video. I don't know if the bot's working today. Can it, did anyone get the bot notification in Discord? Is it now finally working? Anywho, I am expecting less people. I'm therefore expecting less members as well, Jay. Mm. We're not going to get all the members. Yeah, it's more like, a, like a, a small public bathroom Yeah. than like a... Orgy, I guess. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't think of a euphemism. I just went in. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. I didn't know where your mind was going. I'm yeah. glad I waited. Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah. Uh, and the title of the street. So before we get into the actual article itself, of which I've skimmed some of it, skimmed some of it. So it's probably to me as well. All. Yeah, of course. Cause you... I did see a post about the new Lilith book. That's exciting. Did you? Yeah. Okay. I love Lilith. Well, I skimmed some of it, and that, got, that took me to the title, Jay. AOS rules, just do it better. Yeah. We're going to yeah. go into this, but yeah. obviously we've covered a couple of articles so far, reference New Age of Sigma, uh, edition, fourth edition coming out sometime, we assume, this summer, right? Uh, and uh, we've covered the command module yesterday about the new command phase type abilities and how they've tidied that up. We've, co we've covered how you build your army into regiments. We've covered battle tactics and battle traits. At the moment, I'm like, this is just... This just... Often what's going on with me at the moment, often what's going on is I'm reading it, I'm going, oh, it's, a bit, it's a bit complicated. And then I sit back and read it a bit more, and I'm like, actually, it's not. Do you remember at 9th edition when we were getting, in 9th edition, we were hearing about all the 40k rules for 10th edition, how excited we were? It, oh, that's, that is my only like, point of trepidation, Jay. Yeah. We're like, this sounds so much better. Yeah. All the time, we were like, this sounds incredible, this sounds wonderful, why isn't this in 9th edition? And then we got handed it, and we were like, oh. Yeah. It's like when Phantom Menace came out. Although what I will say with, with ninth and 10th was, a lot of it was buzzwords from the community. Mm. They didn't actually showcase specific rules. Well, the thing is, though, we are getting a new edition of rules from a team within Games Workshop that seems to know how to write rules. See, caveat, seems to know how to write so far, <laughs> yeah. right? So we're going to jump into the article. We're going to talk about the article. It's, it's probably, in any game ever, mine and Joe's favourite phase. It's all about... Close combat, yeah, and, me and melee, 
or mili, yeah. as you call it, mm. or malay, as, Pal as Paddy calls it. Or a millage. <laughs> millage? Millage. <laughs> Apparently, there's multiple ways of saying it, depending on who you talk to in the in the, in the team. Yeah. Only this weekend did I notice that Paddy calls it Malay. That's very he is him. a Rupert through and through. Really. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So we're going to talk about that article. If you've got any questions, you can stick them on big, colourful postcards for us. Obviously, we would love to receive all of your members in and around our face. Mm. So if you feel generous this evening, exclamation mark, gift, grift, member, member, any of those ones that you want, right? And... Uh, and think about gifting some memberships, bringing some more crazy people into the Great Hall, into what I think is rapidly becoming one of the greatest hobby communities in existence. Mm. And thank you all, especially if you're already a green name, for being part of it. You're all amazing. Exclamation mark gift. We, we, it, it could, we got no streams tomorrow. That's like at least 100 members down from normal. Yeah. So it'd be great if we could make it up this evening. But I'm aware I ask you lot a lot, basically. All right. Anyway, I have already got it ready, Joe. Ready? Boop. There you go. Ah. Oh, look at that. Already Science. Ready. <laughs> Science and shit. The fires of combat range higher than ever in new AOS. Okay. Warhammer Age of Sigma is a game of combat. Kinetic clashes between mighty heroes, twisted monsters, and warriors tempered in the fires of a thousand battles. The melee, 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 melee is the core element. I'm going to do that every time, though. It's the core element of the game. The rules for fighting at close quarters have been turned for the new edition, or tune, sorry, for the new edition to make these conflicts feel more epic than ever before. Oh, beautiful, my lord. Oh. The changes to commands means that counter charge and power through, which you spoke about yesterday, are powerful new tools to turn the tides of battle. We've already seen that every miniature now has a combat range in a three inch radius, and this simple change has plenty of far reaching ramifications that result in a smoother, more satisfying combat phase. Combat Ninja Sigma. Players familiar with the current edition will find the new process very similar. Units still charge into combat and fight, but these now also work as abilities with clearly defined declaration and effect steps. Oh, it's that abilities word. It's again. the abilities word, yeah. Mm. So the charge she phase. Has the ability to charge. No ability. So charge is an ability, which you do in your charge phase, all right? You declare. You pick a friendly unit that is not in combat and has not used a run or retreat ability this turn to use the ability. Then you make a charge roll of 2d6. So. You do the roll in the declare step, which means the re-roll thing that happens as a reaction, do you remember, in the command module, happens after the declare step, before the effect step. You only declare the re-roll after you've rolled the dice. So it fixed that problem that we were worried about yesterday. Beautiful. Scooter! Thank you for five gifted memberships. Thanks, mate. I'm saying thank you for memberships really fast tonight because we were... Scooter! <laughs> because... We need to get as many as possible. Morning Hammer, thank you for one more. You're a hero. Yeah. On it, like a car bonnet. Effect. That unit can move a distance up to the value of the charge roll. That unit cannot move through the combat ranges of any enemy units and must end the move within half an inch of a visible enemy unit. Oh, sorry, it can move through the combat ranges of enemy units. If it does so, that unit using this ability has charged. What I really love about this, something I was actually genuinely a little bit concerned about, what I like about this is that... Um, you still don't have to pick a target for the charge. Nice. Pick a friendly unit not in combat, roll a charge roll. Yeah, make a charge roll. Make a distance, move that distance. Because it says this unit can move through the combat ranges of an enemy, of any enemy unit and must end. Does that mean that if, if say, two models are like, I don't know, two inches apart and you've got like a 25 mil base, I mean, you can move through the enemy unit. Logically, yes. I mean, that's pretty. I reckon that's probably pretty rare. But yeah, yeah or yeah. like a thirty-two mil base. Yeah. Like the but if you've got like a blob of enemies here, yeah. and you're here, there's a wall here, and there's enemies there, and you want to go there, you can go through that gap, even if it would put you in engagement range. Oh, so you could charge past the unit to go. Through yeah, yeah. Unit. You can. Oh, you yeah. can move yeah. within engagement range, move out of engagement range, and keep going. Uh, equally, if you uh, specifically, if you do have. 25 mil bases, two inches apart, and you're moving a 25 mil base through it. Unlike 40k, where you definitely can't do that, despite what White Dwarf tells you. Uh, in this particular instance, you can move through that gap, yes. 100%. Like There's another person who's gifted, and I want you to read it out, the bottom one. <laughs> Nostradromadery. Nostradromadery. <laughs> Nostradromadery. Nostradromadery. <laughs> Yeah, Nostradamadary. <laughs> I think every Thank single time he said that. <laughs> I think every time he said that, it was slightly different. Yeah. <laughs> also, Thinky Taby. Also, the Harley Museum is right by 
down the road. What's the first one? Is that also from Tay? Tay B says, so pumped Adepticon 25 has moved to be only 20 minutes away from me. Big hype. Probs will be the first big event like that as well. That's meg I heard about it, it moved because it was, was it like... Um, the Harley Museum? Is that not in Milwaukee? Is it in Milwaukee now? I don't know. Someone, basically, I, it was like... Like the Daily Bolter was put up a thing about some guy complained because he wants to boycott a yeah, Decon because it's moved and he can't yeah. get it for free anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> so cool. So you'd still have to declare a target for a charge. You still just go, that unit's charging, roll your charge roll, work out how far you've got, pick mm. a unit to move into combat with. I like it. I'm into it. I'm, ha I'm happy with that, right? Core, move, charge. I don't know what these keywords mean yet, but there you go. There's keywords there. As a core rule, it's a movement ability and, and a charge, charge ability, yeah. I suppose. In any combat phase, you can use the fight ability, right? You can use the fight ability. These are all abilities. I like the way this is. I'm going to be honest with you at the moment. I'm, still, I'm staying positive. I'm still terrified because I've, I've had, I was touched in my dark places by 10th edition. I like the way this is laid out, mm. right? Declare, pick a friendly unit that is in combat or that charge this turn to use this ability. That unit can make a pile-in move. Then, if that unit is in combat, you must pick one or more enemy units as the targets of that unit's attacks. Effect, resolve combat attacks against the target unit. Okay, super simple, right? Okay, so it must end its move within half an inch of a visible enemy unit. Perfect, okay, cool. I don't, the, the, the interesting part here, it can make a pile-in move, then if it is in combat, you must pick one or more enemy units as the targets of attack. Why wouldn't it be in combat after you've made a pile-in move? Pick a friendly unit that is in combat or, or that charged, charged this turn to use his ability. That unit can make a pile-in move. Then, if that unit is in combat, you must pick one or more. And so, what oh, could happen? You could multi-charge a unit, you could, or you could charge a unit with multiple units. One unit could kill the unit entirely. And then you've got a couple of units that aren't in combat anymore that can then pile in and possibly make a la combat. Eighth and ninth edition, forty k. Yeah. So you get movement because you've charged. The better version of pile in. The and better combat. version of pile in combat. That makes more sense. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Good. And then you resolve combat attacks. The order of operations is generally much clearer in this edition. There are no more start of phase or end of phase sub phases. In each phase, the active player uses any of their abilities in whichever order they want, and then their opponent can do the same like the Ard Boy's Shield Bash and the Blood Sisters' Crystal Touch. What it hasn't told us yet is if it's still you go, I go in combat, which I'm hoping it is. Who knows, right? So Shield Bash from Ard Boys, you do, is it any combat phase? Declare, pick an enemy unit in combat with this unit and that, that charge is turned to be the target. Hmm. Make a Shield Bash roll of D6 for each model of this unit for each 6 plus and inflict one, inflict one mortal damage, which is a mortal wound. Right? Oh, yeah, cool. Can I just say, how badass does that orc look? That's like a cool. proper mean evil looking orc. He's a pretty chonky boy, isn't he? Yeah, I like yeah. him. But Snake Lady, she can use her crystal touch, Joe. Crystal touch. Like a crystal ball. Pick an enemy unit in combat with this unit to be the target. Roll a dice. If the roll exceeds the target's health characteristic, the target has strike last for the rest of the turn. Oh, that's good. We've already seen strike first. That's strong. Strike last. I like that. Okay. The combat phase has one significant difference to other phases. After both players have resolved any of their other abilities for this phase, they then take it in turns to activate units to use fight abilities, starting with the active player. Strikes first and strikes last effects are still very much in the mix, occurring on either side of the standard fight timings. Coupled with all-out attack and all-out defense, the combat phase remains a tense and strategic affair. Units cannot make shooting attacks if they are in combat, unless their weapons have the shoot in combat ability. That's pretty clear, isn't it? Like that, so yeah. tagging a missile unit is a great opportunity for counterplay. Combat ability sequence. Active player's combat phase abilities, not fight. Opponent's combat phase abilities, not fight. Players alternate using fight abilities, starting with the active player. A unit can perform a pilot move as part of the fight ability, allowing models to move up to three inches. Every model in that unit must end the move no further from the target unit than it was before piling in and must still be in combat with every unit it started with the uh, move engaged in combat with. Every I... model in that unit must end the move no further from the target unit that was in before piling in. Okay. Oh, so it stops you from spreading out and yeah. touching other units. Some abilities, such as fight abilities, allow you to make a short move called a pile-in move to get into better position for combat. To do so, if your unit is in combat, pick an enemy unit that your unit is in combat with to be the target of the pile-in move. 
Each model in your unit can move up to three inches. That move can pass through combat ranges of enemy units, but each model must end that move no further from the target unit. At the end of the move, your unit must still be in combat with all units that it was in combat with at the start of the move. So you can't pile in out of combat with another unit that you happen to already no. be in combat with, right? If your unit is not in combat, each model in your unit can, make, uh, can move three inches in any direction. That move can pass through and end within the combat ranges of enemy units. Any direction is strong. It's old 7th and 8th edition. Uh, 8th and 9th edition. Mm. It's good. That's really good. Because it means if you go, you don't have to pile into combat. You can go in a different direction or move block or... Mm. I like it. Absolutely. I like it. Absolutely. The process of working out combat will be familiar to players with a few key changes. Unmodified rolls of a 6 are now critical hits, a term that can trigger a range of new effects on attacks, while mortal wounds have been renamed mortal damage. We've seen critical hits before. I assume it's similar to 40k. Right? A critical hit is a 6. We know that yeah. language already. Overall, rend has been reduced throughout the game. That is frightening. They said that about AP. Having played Orcs last night... Everything in that book seems to be AP too. Yeah, even grots apparently. Right? And while you can still positively modify your save profile with all-out defence, this remains capped at plus one. Most factions lack any other tools to further increase a unit save profile, so save stacking, the process of negating <laughs> rend by adding extra, adding extra save, is largely a thing of the past. Which, I, to be fair, does sound like it's removed some <coughs> complexity. My only hope is that they actually stick to this. We've, re we've reduced some of the rend. That being said, I've been looking through third edition battle tomes, and rend doesn't seem to be a massive problem, but then I don't know what the typical armor save value well, is. Well, I think, like, a lot of stuff is what you think. So, like... Uh, if you seem to have plate armor, it's a three plus. And then if you have a shield, it tends to either be it tends to be a ward save. So you got you got a shield, which means you have a five up ward save. Like I think like uh, Slaves Darkness have it, or you get like a re-rollable like a re-roll ones kind of ability. Okay, which which I quite like. It streamlines cool. it. So none of this like plus one minus one. Min then minus two kind of... The thing stuff. is, one of the reasons why I was so excited about the lack of lethality that was promised in, t in 10th edition 40k was because I was very bored mm. of turn one tablings nearly. I mean, I, turn one tabling never actually really happens, but yeah. you know what I mean? Where I mean, let's be honest, Joe, you experienced it on Sunday, right? Mm. When you deployed your Chaos Space Marines against Paddy's Tau, mm. and after turn one, you were like, I don't have any, really anything left. And after turn two, you conceded. Yeah. Now, that was supposed to be a thing of the past. Yeah. Now, it's already less likely to happen in Age of Sigma because there is less shooting abilities than there is yeah. in 40k. But if they're also gently, gently, gently bringing the rend down as well, which is AP for the yeah. us 40k fans, that means that, guess what? You're going to get to play with your shit a lot longer. And that's cool. Yeah. I think, it, it, like, if it means that, like, uh, Chaos Shields are five, pe five plus save against mortals. Yeah, at the moment. Um, like, I do like the idea, like, if it's a basic sword or a basic knife or just a bow and arrow, being AP zero makes sense because it's just... Because if it hit an armor, an armor, a front armor player, it probably wouldn't yeah. do much damage. But if you're a special character, your sword might be a bit more special. Yeah. Or if you're like a lance on the charge, getting plus what, like a better AP would make sense because there's the force of a horse behind it. Yeah, the force of a horse. The force of a horse. Horsepower. Yeah. Yeah. Not like turtle power. No. It'd be much lower. Okay, we'll see, right? Save stacking is a thing of the past. See, some of these things, like save stacking, mm. sounds super negative, but I've never really experienced it, so I don't know if it's actually that much of a problem. So, um, I think like I think there is ways of having a, so you can go all out defense with plus one, and then you there are psychic abilities like like um, something Mystic Shield which gives you plus one because then it could put you on like a one up save yeah. kind of thing. Okay, it's not it's not super. You can't have it like across the entire table, but but like one unit will have. Yeah, who I knows? I'm not sure. I don't know. But if that's a problem, then apparently mm. it's gone. Uh, Wee Man asked if, we'd, if I'm doing another show later. I'm not. This is the only show for Wednesday. It's replacing 40k show, and there's no streams tomorrow. There's reasons which we well, I can't talk about. But yeah, Joe and I are um, making babies tonight. <laughs> there is a slight change to the way damage is allocated. Now, this is the bit that I have more knowledge of at the moment. Personally, I love this. I'd like to know what you think, right? Instead of allocating damage points to a model in a unit, damage points are now allocated to the unit as a whole. When the total of damage points allocated to a unit equals the health characteristic of that unit, the commanding player removes the model from that unit, but they must stay in coherency. 
This greatly speeds up how damage is totted up, and stops you from losing track of which model was injured, or absent-mindedly allocating the first damage point to your unit champion, or coming to curse your past self. I like that. That sounds good. Does it make sense? Yeah, because it like, like if you've got a unit of people and you allocate it to some, into like one guy, and then you move the unit, and you're like, oh, I've allocated to the guy who's now in the middle. And if you shoot me, he disappears, and now I'm out of coherency. Yeah. It's super annoying. Yeah, yeah. Or you put it on a guy, and then you go into combat, and you go, oh, I put it on a guy with a, cha like a power fist. I kind of want to go with a power sword to die yeah. instead. So it makes sense. To, to, it means you can choose in the moment, and it just kind of cleans things the up. Two, the, two biggest, the two biggest positives for me, uh, which are kind of interlinked, and um, the person who first brought this up, I think, in the only things was Gaz, uh, and I, I didn't even think about it until he brought it up, and it got me excited instantly, right? One of the things that I kind of hate the most when we stream but it is a necessary evil, unfortunately. Is it Brom? Is, there's that as well. Is the requirement to have models dragging dice around to show mm. you how many wounds they've got left. Now, let's be honest, right? It is a tabletop war game with static miniatures. It's not the most immersive thing in the world. It's not the latest AAA video game on a top-spec computer with VR goggles on your face. It's not that immersive. No. But some of that minor immersion that does exist does go away a little bit when everyone's dragging a dice around to be like, oh, I've hurt me foot. I've hurt my foot, yeah. right? So the way I'm looking at it, or everything at the moment, is if I've got my data cards off to one side on the tabletop and my unit of um, tree revenants hmm. takes a, a single damage, and let's say they're too, too health each. I don't know what they are. Let's say they're too health. Kernoth uh, hunters are typically like three wounds, I think. Yeah. So let's say the Kernoth hunters take a wound. What I could do is I could take a wound counter and I could just put it on the data card. It's not on the tabletop. So it does, I don't have to drag the dice around. There's a couple of reasons. So first of all, like I said, it, it doesn't ruin the immersion. Yeah. The second thing is, how many times have people done this? I move my model, I move my unit, I'm doing my movement phase, I'm quite happy, I'll do a charge phase, and I'm like, where did that dice come from? Yeah. Whose was that wound counter? Yeah. Who does this belong to? The only thing that it, that it will struggle with then is if you've got multiples of the same unit. Yeah. Because you'd, you'd have to have multiple cards, I guess, of the same Maybe, maybe. Mm. There'll be ways around it. Yeah. Absolutely there will be. But I like the fact that I now probably don't have to have dice on the tabletop at the very least. Yeah. Like I'm a big fan of that. Um, I don't have to have dice being dragged around. Uh, same as I don't have to now think, who's the wounded model and where do I put him in the future? Yeah. I, I just I just faff. I like that. So I, I'm a fan of it. It was like, it was like old, old like 7th like edition was the last one had it. No, 6th edition, where you took from the front of the unit you know, yeah. like in terms of damage, which is a nightmare. Because if you're like, oh, I have, if I move my unit, the, the closest model is going to be the guy with the melter gun because you have to shoot something. But if you shoot at me, he's the first to die. <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm never against the first rank dying because it's kind of narrative. Mm. But this is just, this is just simpler. Mm. It's just easier. And if you don't want to put your dice off the table and you want to put it on your, unit, on your table because you've got four units of the same unit, you can still do that. You don't have to worry about which model has the wound. You don't have to worry about where that model is. I'm just a fan. Mm. I just think it's neater and it's easier and it's slightly quicker. I'm a fan of it. While combat range, with combat range gone, you might have some questions about how a warrior with a hammer is set apart from one with a spear. This has been handled by further differentiating the role of each unit on the battlefield. Weapon and war scroll abilities now provide units with specific roles. Take the bristling spear wall of a Stormcast Eternal Vindicator as an example. They have anti-charge rend plus one as a weapon ability, granting additional rend when they are charged, because they've got big fucking spears like pipe. Oh, I like that. I just fucking love this, Joe, by the way. That's amazing. While they have the opportunity to strike first if they successfully hold the shield wall. Oh my God, when I read that, I started tingling. You know what I'm like for shield walls, right? Yeah. Let's get into it, right? Hold the shield wall. This is a Vindicate data card. One ability. I'm a fan of this straight away, right? Storm Spear. Two attacks, hit on three, wound on three, rend one, damage one. Anti-charge. So if, if you charge me, start with, I go to rend two. Because you've charged spears, which is a silly thing to do for most things, right? But hold the shield wall. Any combat phase. If this unit did not charge this turn and is in combat with an enemy unit that charged this turn, roll a dice. On a first plus, on a four plus, this unit has strike first for the rest of well, the that, turn. That makes sense because they're holding this like they've got spears or pikes. They hold the spear out, put their foot on it, and be like, "Just run onto this, please." Yeah, yeah. I so like you that. run into a unit of people prepped with spears. Guess what? You probably don't get to fight first, and it's going to feel a bit more stabby yeah. than normal. Gonna suck. Narratively, if you think about a unit charging a unit with spears, narratively. 
Uh, the effect from Hold the Shield Wall and the anti-charge plus one render ability, brilliant. Yeah. What I really like is it's all on one card as well. It's fucking brilliant, Joe. Yeah. It's brilliant. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, love it, right? Uh, we've got some oh, keywords. Those, that mean, ah, oh, the Luminef with their massive, like, Big Pike, Ben. Big mess, but I reckon they'll be like anti ren 2 Plus. I, I hope they're, they're really slow, though, because those things must have been a nightmare to travel around yeah. with. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like lightsabers, you press a button. Yeah. Like, a, <laughs> like a nightstick. <laughs> it's just like... Greater combat range and no battle shock make seething hordes of clan rats and crypt ghouls more dangerous. But monstrous infantry like Croxagore love to cut a bloody swathe through these teeming mobs. Their anti infantry plus one rend devastates armour, while the Brutal Blow's passive ability can pulverise four bodies in a single swing, and they get four attacks. Jesus. <laughs> so here's the Crocs go, right? Six health, as opposed to these guys who've got two health, okay? Yeah. Their save is four plus, control two, move five, right? Yeah. So we've got anti-infantry plus one rend, which means if they're fighting infantry, infantry keyword units, like here, where it says infantry, they get an additional rend, nice. which, is quite, which is quite tidy, right? Yeah. But they have Brutal Blows. Add one to the damage characteristic of this unit's melee weapons for attacks at target an enemy unit that has 10 or more models. I like that. And that is specifically on both weapons, because it's just a passive so like that a, happens all the time. It's basically, it, 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 it cleans up like a sweep attack, doesn't yeah. it? I like yeah, that. It's good. So yeah. with the dark, with, with the dark, the Drake Bright Maul, right? You hit on fours, you get two damage. With the Moonstone Hammer, you hit on threes, you get three damage. Mm. Both of these, if you're targeting a unit of say twenty models, you get plus one damage. So with this one, four attacks, you get four damage. There is a potential there if you hit and wound with everything and everyone fails their saves. There is obviously the potential there of doing sixteen damage to a unit with one Croxagore. I like that. Super tasty. Right? And they're three Croxagores. Now, obviously, one out of three models can replace their uh, Drake Bite Maul with a Moonstone Hammer. Okay, so you, go, you don't get three Moonstone Hammers. No. You get two Moonstone Hammers, uh, one Moonstone Hammer, sorry, and two Drake Bite Mauls in a unit of three. Yeah. Hey, who knew that? You know, having different weapon options as a single unit was cool. I like it. Fucking 40k. Coherency range. All that moving, charging, piling in, and general jostling. You'll like this, by the way, because you brought something up earlier. And general jostling around is also tied into coherency, which represents how units move and fight together. The coherency range is now half an inch. And models must remain within range of at least one other model in their unit. Okay. That tightens things up. Yep. So instead of having these massive, wild, loose blobs floating around everywhere, yep. there are actually... Staying in almost like a rank and file. Yep, and no, no, they're stringing shit out two inches apart to make a long conga line. How? So 40k went. How do we fix this? Well, we go. If you're over six, you have to be within range of two models. No, no. Age of Sigma went half an inch, one model each. There you go, done. I like it. GW 10th edition rules writers. They wrote the words simplified, not simple, but didn't understand it. Yeah. AOS went. We get what that means. Watch this. Yeah. <laughs> Models in units of seven or more fighters. Oh, fuck off. Okay, they, all right. They, they ruined me here. Uh, models in units of seven or more fighters must remain with a considerable range of at least two other of their comrades, while certain units, especially those comprised of large models like Stormbreak Guard, have a larger coherency range noted on their war scrolls. Coherency is measured horizontally, which means height differences don't matter. I like that. Yeah. I'm a bit sad that they had the, if seven or more, you still have to, but okay, I get it. I, still no conga I suppose lines, I it means that, like, if you're a small unit, you can go in a line. Yeah. Like, it's like a defensive line, whereas if you're a big blob, like, if there's lots of you. Yeah. I suppose you can still do the dog bone thing. I hate it. I, I mean, I won't because I hate it, but... But it's a lot harder to do the dog bone. Uh, the amount of times, though, so um, I, I, in the last, you know, two, three editions, I've played actually a relatively high amount of competitive 40k, right? I've gone to lots of GTs, played lots of tournaments. And, caveat, thoroughly fucking enjoyed myself. Genuinely yeah. really, really enjoyed myself. But one of the things that's always felt a bit off is specifically when you're using things like Guardsmen or maybe Eldar Guardians, things like those sorts of models, two-inch coherency at that point, right, just, it looks weird. Yeah. When you have certain competitive players who 
are just using the rules, right? It's not their fault. I'm not saying yeah. they're douchebags or they shouldn't be doing this. They're flat just using rules mm. and they're and playing legally, right? It's not their problem. Yeah. When they individually mo measure 1.9 inches between every single model to make sure that they have the biggest possible footprint they can because they're move blocking. Or they're, the time or, they're, or, they're, or they're deep strike blocking yeah. or whatever they're doing, right? It, it looks a bit weird. It's a bit rabbly. I think half an inch is going to make them look like cohesive units and yeah. that's something that I think is pretty cool. Yeah. From a from a thematic perspective, mm. well, but go on. But also because these armies tend to be more combat oriented, it kind of fixes the units in a in an area. Like you, you're not going to have units wandering into other units as well. Well, the other thing as well is if you think about three inch engagement range now essentially being a thing. If you also had two inch coherency, you end up with a massive engagement bubble. Yeah, a huge engagement bubble, which means when you're piling in. When you activate a unit, it says that you can pile in and you can end in combat range of other units. It says that you can do that. Yeah. If you had two inch coherency and three inch engagement range, mm. suddenly you have this monumentally fucking huge front rank of dudes who can engage multiple units because they've got big reach and big coherency. By bringing the coherency down to half an inch, you've solved the issue of having one, two, three inch engagement ranges because you have to keep the coherency. So it restricts yeah. how many units you can and engage. And objectives are... Smaller now as well, aren't they? I, well, I don't know. We, I was told, I've always thought the objectives were the same as we were using when, we, when Warhips was here, when Josh was here. I was told we were using the wrong size. They were too small. They should be much bigger. But I didn't know that. Because yeah. people said they were double the size. Yeah, so like in, so they've, they, they announced that they're, the, they're going to be the, four, uh, the three inch. They're, they're 40k so, objectives now. Yeah, they're 40k objectives. But, but they were six inches, much bigger. Yeah, like so, these massive dinner plates all over the table. I, so having a small <laughs> having smaller objectives with smaller unit coverage yeah. makes sense. Because if you had the same unit coverage but smaller objectives, it meant that it'd be so much harder to take objectives. It, it monumentally opponent. improves strategic positioning. Yeah. It's what it does. It, it means when you're when you're moving your rank and file infantry around the the, the battle grid, etc., right, then the what you're doing at this point is you're you're massively improving the strategic play between players. Because at the moment, with six inch objectives, which by the way, I just assume they meant six inch round, I don't think they meant six inch radius, which is fucking mental. Your objectives are borderline fucking touching each other, mm. which means one unit with normal coherency, you can be like, I'm just gonna stand on both. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, retreating. Battleshock has gone, because to fight in the Age of Sigmar is to fight for the fate of the mortal realms. Armies engage in battle with utter conviction and battle to the bitter end. But retreat is now an ability used in the movement phase, a tactical decision that comes with a cost of D3 mortal damage. Though some wily units may be able to use special abilities to slip out of combat without reprisal, including certain Skaven. I'm going to be straight up here, right? I'm going to be, like, really straight up here. At this point in 40k, I'd rather they did the same. Like, Battleshock is... Fucking bollocks. It now, isn't. granted, last night I failed about 27 battle shock tests. Do you know how much of an impact it had? Zero. Basically nothing. Yeah. I lo one objective he scored that he wouldn't have done otherwise. Wait, you bet you wish you had those banners now. I was OP zero. I was OC zero. Yeah, but your banner gives you plus one. So it means but it's still it zero. Goes, yeah. Oh, does it go up to one each then? Yeah. Uh, I no, because, because the Custodes rules are so good, if you take a banner, you lose your fucking spear, and you're basically fighting then as a custodian with a tin opener. You can't like, hit it with his, Bonk! his banner. Right. Yeah. So, so like it basically made a five-point difference last night, that, that OC. Yeah. And, I, and I've, I failed about a million battle shots. Honestly, I hate battle shock. As a Tyranid player, I think it's the most monumentally useless ability in the game. Yep. When your army rule is make your opponent take battle shock tests. Yeah. What failed? Oh, that one guy yeah. in no man's land is not on an objective. And, I, and I, but to be fair, to give them some credit, what credit's due, old like morale was also a bit of shit. Oh, you failed morale. You lose loads more models. Yeah. Like, so when like when you compare Oath of Moment to which oh pick a unit and every turn you reroll all hits versus it, or once per game your your opponent has to take a battle shock test, which they probably will pass. Yeah. And then even in current AOS, in version 3, it's like, you've lost this many models, and this is your leadership, and you've got to do, and this is your bravery, so you've got to, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do the math. I don't want to work out what I need to roll, and how many I'm going to, like, oh, you, you can't fight, you can't pass the leadership, so roll a dice, and however many dice you roll, that's how many models you're removing. Hmm. Like, oh, 
I was like, okay, I prefer it, I think, to modern day 40k Battleshock, but I still don't love it. Got rid of it, basically, right? So pick a, this is the retreat ability, right, which happens in your movement phase. Pick a yeah. friendly unit that is in combat to use this ability. Inflict D3 mortal damage on that unit. That unit can move a distance up to its move characteristic. That unit cannot move through the combat ranges of any enemy units, but cannot, oh, sorry, it can, fuck me, it can move through the combat ranges of any enemy units, I'm tired, chat, but cannot end that move within an enemy unit's combat range. So you can move through combat range, but you can't end in combat range. Now, the other thing that means is, that means you can move basically past closely to an enemy unit as you're running away, but you can't move through it, because we've just discussed it's a half inch, um, uh, uh, coherency now, right? Can you charge? No, because charging you couldn't have made a move, uh, a run or retreat move. So if we go up to charge, right, well remember this war on retreat, this is where the rules, I've done some of this scrolling by the way, and it, it just sort of, at the moment at least, all kind of makes sense, which is quite nice. Charge. Pick a friendly unit that is not in combat and has not run or retreat. Banging. Banging, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's like they thought of it, Joe, and shit. Right, so, uh, into retreat, right? The, the big thing I like about this the most, right, it's an ability, right? Mm. It's not a stratagem. So every single unit in your army can do this at the same time. Oh, hang on, we need a screen share, right? Thank you, chat. I forgot yeah. I put us on People are saying, is this a 40k stream? Not tonight, because politics. Who said that? Who asked that? Uh, I, I think, when are we getting to 40k? And then someone else was like, is there going to be a 40k talk tonight? And then someone was like, is this not a 40k stream? And we're like, no. 40k is meh and whiny right now. Mindless telepathy, could have put it better myself, right? Yeah. So what I like about this, every single unit in your army can retreat in the same turn. You don't have to pick where you pay a stratagem or whatever, that's cool. The big thing that I love about this, if you're choosing to retreat, if you're choosing to turn your back on your enemy yeah. that you're in close quarters combat with and run away, you will take D3 mortal damage. And it's, and it's a risk, because if, like, if you're one model with a, a wounds character to go three, you could die. Yeah. It's a gamble at that point as well. Absolutely. Isn't it? Like if you're that. single wound models, you are losing a model at least. Yeah. I, I, I kind of love it. Mm. The cost of turning and running is one of your comrades is going to get cut down. Yeah. I, I think it, I'm a big fan. It makes life a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, on Friday, we'll be unrolling arcane scrolls, brushing off our dogma, and pondering orbs, both Thormat. Yeah. And the, yeah, as we unpick how magic versus manifestations work in the new. Addition. Or to Majiguri. We're not worried about that. There we go. I don't know. Cool. Yep. Choose your side. Right, there we go. So that is podcast main. That is the new fight phase in Age of Sigma. I like it. I haven't read any of that and gone, that's a bit shit. That's really good. It tidies up, cleans up a lot more. I like the um the fact that getting rid of leadership and bow shock um is just makes life easy. It cleans things up and it has like, in, in 40k, you're like, I'm going to fight a combat. What does it mean? Nothing, I just fight a combat. You just do it. It happens. Oh, no, uh, from oh, Battleshot. No shot, negative. From Battleshot, I have to take a desperate breakout test. Yeah. And if I roll, I roll dice, and then on a one, I take a mortal wound. Or no, yeah. a model dies, isn't it? Oh, Pete, the war game is here. Hey, dude. Hello, Pete. Hello, Pete. Let's <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, it, dude. Uh, Nostradamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamadamad
who's seeing all this stuff and going, it's mostly positive, if not all positive. Mm. Like, I'm, I'm, that makes me feel better yeah. about, like, I'm getting really excited about AOS 4. I've said this before, chat, I'll say it again, right? Never played AOS 1, never played AOS 2. You've seen me play AOS 3, my only one battle round that I played with Mr. Warhips on stream. I've never played either of them. I've always wanted to get into it because of the model range. I've always wanted to get into it because of the fantasy setting. I've always been so heavily focused on 40K. Straight up, completely straight up on, and honest with you all right now, and I mean like truly honest with you right now, if 40k 10th edition was in a phenomenal place in my mind, and I'm not saying it's a bad game system, I've said this repeatedly, I need to keep saying it, because the second you say one thing and you don't fully explain yourself, the internet goes, you're a bastard! But in my <laughs> mind, at least, it's not the best edition of the game, and I don't think it's a good rule well, set. Uh, I, it's, I, I, it's, like, it's the first time ever where... I'm literally terrified about the release of a <laughs> yeah, exactly. about well. the release of a codex for my army. Yeah. Right. The, my favorite army in the game. And I'm like, and you look at all the stuff that's been released and you're like, I but have legitimate fear. If I felt 10th was in a phenomenal place right now, yeah. honestly speaking, I probably my head probably wouldn't have been turned by Age of Sigma. Mm. My head's been turned because I said to Joe a few months ago, in fact, I was like, I, I for my sake. I kind of want, even if we don't put it on camera and we keep doing our normal streams on camera, I kind of want to play something different. I didn't even, it didn't even cross my mind that AOS 4 might be coming out this, this year. Yeah. And I was like, I want to play something different. It seems like AOS makes sense. It's probably got the best model range of any game system, for that matter, anywhere. Um, it's a rule set that looks like it's lots of fun. I don't have to wait 17 years for all the armies to be released like Old World. And when they do get released, I don't have to worry about them being 85-year-old models. I don't have to worry about a super fucking, you've painted them the wrong color, like heresy type historical wargaming audience. Like, I just feel like AOS made sense. And then with version four coming out, it's the first time I felt like, here's an opportunity. Because when they put out the first article, they were like, what, and when they, when they did the reveal, they were like, what we're going to do, by the way, we've taken three years of Age of Sigma, and it's kind of grown and grown and grown and grown and grown. So we're doing a bit of a reset. We're not resetting by changing everything. But we're doing a bit of a reset. We're taking everything we've added in, and we're going, bang, here's a simplified rule set. And I was like, it's perfect time for yeah. me to get into it. So if you are one of our 40K fans, this might turn your... I'd, I'd implore you to go and have a look at all of the articles that are on Warcom right now because I'm genuinely getting more excited. Now, the more we're covering these rules as well, there's more people that I know that weren't interested in 4th edition Age Sigma yeah. who are 40K fans who are now going, this is actually sounding pretty good yeah. right now. And the thing is, though, it's not difficult to be swayed by a game that has incredible models, either. Oh, absolutely. I just, I'm just looking for an excuse to buy them. Like, I'm building uh, Cities of Sigma at the moment, and I'm like, these models are just better than everything. Yeah. Better yeah, than they everything are, they are gorgeous. Like, the, like, like, the City stuff is like the first time I've built models, and I've gone, they've actually thought about how these models go together. Yeah. and how they look afterward, like afterwards. I'm like, I can't wait to get these models on the table. I don't even care what their rules are. I just want to play with these models in a rule system that seems to be really, really good. Yeah. Oh, Pete says, I'm good, thanks. How are you guys? We're amazing. Good. We're amazing, We're Pete. Do you know what else is coming this year now? I sent you a message earlier. You didn't respond. What's that? Oh, Action Free. Oh, uh, Action uh, Third Edition September. Not bothered by that. I am. I, uh, Much excited. Uh, thanks. The thing is, Bolt Action 3 is coming out in September, probably two to three months after Age of Sigma's version four, uh, edition 4 is coming out, if we guess roughly June, July time. I will, I'll have no interest in any other game at that point. I'll also be playing AOS. Unless, Thanks. unless Warcom is in fact 10th editioning it, and actually the game's a bag of knob, which is also possible. And then, and then you might get me hooked in Bolt Action 3. Let, let's be honest. <laughs> it's possible. Let's be honest, people's faith in the uh, Games Workshop social media team is not great at the moment. Yeah. So, um, no, well, no. We were. <laughs> they should probably take a few days off. We could. Uh, we could play some Octon Panzer. We could. I don't think we it's like Titanicus, but with tanks. Yeah. Anyway, chat. We're probably gonna be live for like another half hour. We've got seven members, Jay. We've uh, we've got a super chat to go for as well from seven. Alec Man. Seven. Says the name is Vin Dick Tours, uh, not Vindicators. They're different. They're different. I'll just call all of them Vindicators. Potatoes. I'm just call all of them Vindicators. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. I'm just, all of them will be Vindicators. Yeah. And guess what? I probably will go, yeah, they're Vindictors. And then I'll, I'll be on stream the first time with them and I'll call them Vindicators. I'll play by action free with Pete the Wargamer. You can come do it on the channel, I don't care. Yeah. You're welcome to. It's a date. Yeah, maybe. Eh, 
It depends on the game system. The bolt action, bolt, the thing is right, <coughs> bolt action is the best game ever made. Is unfortunately Horus Heresy, right? And what I mean by that is, I think the rule set for bolt action is incredible. I love the rule set for bolt action. Yes. I often find that some of the people that it attracts to it are of a specific variety of human. Where if you haven't painted your armor the right shade of uh, green, it'll get very that's upset. That's a with very you. small portion, though. That's the, that's the portion I've seen, Jay. Yeah, that is true. Like sometimes that you do meet them, they do exist. I think the better version part of the community are the ones that like it. The thing that people miss the point of bolt action. The bolt action is not a historical war game. It's a movie simulator. At the end of the day, you're just recreating cool battle scenes from yeah. films and television. Yeah, from real life, like Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ballad Brothers. <laughs> Thank you, Kazarian. Do you feel some vindication? <laughs> That's from Brooklyn Online. Is it? Like, vindication. Oh, okay. They but he makes a balloon arch. Oh. It's a great episode. The, one of the things I want to talk about, though, because we, we have got another half an hour or so, and I'm going to hold on in the hope that they start gifting memberships again. Um, one of the things I do want to talk about, though, and it's the stream title. So what I is think the title? This, you, you can read it there. Can I? Yeah. AOS, AOS rules, rules just, just do, do it better, better. combat in new AOS, oh. right? But the question I genuinely have is, why is it so? Why is there such disparity, at least it seems, between the two rules writing teams? Why is there such disparity? Age of Sigma people that are watching right now, answer a question for me, because I don't know the answer to this. Throughout third edition Age of Sigma, with the release of Battle Tomes, have you had monumentally overpowered codexes, battle tomes, and monumentally underpowered battle tomes, or are they all roughly in a similar bracket? I, do, I don't know the answer to this. I'm See, just curious. I, my, my argument is, is what I, I have said it before, is that Age of Sigmar is not big enough to release a bad product. Everything AOS Age of Sigmar puts out has to be a win. Because, yeah, you said, you said this before. Yeah, because Warhammer has been around for <coughs> 35, 40, nearly 40 years, right? Yep. Um, and Warhammer hasn't changed. It's still Space Marines, it's still Orcs, it's still Tyranids. Obviously, these, these things have come along since it was released, not it didn't start at the beginning. And there will be people out there who be like, the Tau only came out in 2004. I know, right? It's, all, it's not changed, really. The movements of units haven't really changed. The strength of things haven't really changed. Like space means are still strength four. They're still movement six. Well, they actually started at toughness three, I think. And, and like jump pack still move twelve. That that stuff, that stuff is still very much the same. Yep. Whereas Age of Sigma is not Warhammer fit, Warhammer fantasy. It's not no. S Sigma's been here for nine years. It doesn't have the I used to play Warhammer when I was five with my dad kind of feel. Uh, so everything that it has to put out now <laughs> has to be a great reason to play. I'm sorry, Kills and Gaming. No one intends to put out a bad product unless they're selling on Team U. <laughs> <laughs> that, made me, that made me chuckle. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> but if you think sorry. about it, 40k, I'm, I'm going to touch some people now, 40k is the Call of Duty franchise. Yeah, no, I, I, I believe. I, yeah. I completely agree with you. It doesn't right? matter what shit they put out. People will buy it. Yep. They'll keep playing it, and then they will get over it, and then just buy the next thing that comes out. Yep. And Games Workshop. But, but not just that. Yeah. Like you, I think. So I completely agree. I think yeah. you can expand that. I think yeah. you can expand that comparison as well, because what does the average less than one KD Call of Duty player do in Warzone? It downloads the latest meta app yeah. and find out what the latest meta gun is. Yeah. And they go in there and, they, and they'll tune their controller. And th that's what the average Call of player, Duty player does. They're not playing in World Series Warzone. They're not playing for phase at the World Championships. But that's what they're doing. Yeah. They have to be competitive. And I think a lot of the 40k audience, I don't want to tire everyone with the same brush, but I think a lot of the 40k audience does similar. Uh, there's a question from Scott. Never played AOS, but is the AOS less driven by the competitive scene in comparison to 40k? In my experience so far, the AOS audience typically seems to be, even at tournaments, a lot more chilled. Yeah. Like, when I was at Beachhead, you look around the 40k tables, 
people are having fun, but a lot of them, especially at the higher ends, they look miserable. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you always look miserable. I, uh, even if they were <laughs> winning, they look so depressed and tired. And you turn around and you look at the AOS people and it's like loads of fun. It's like in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where there's like a big, like the wall gets knocked down from this dingy warehouse. And it's all just like cartoon happy land and everyone's like running around and jumping. Like that's, that's like my comparison, you know? That's people playing AOS. Yeah. <laughs> Very right? Awesome. Everyone's having a great time. It's cartoon rivers, you know. Um, it's got um, rabbits in it and, and big booby sequin ladies. It's all great. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm into that. Yeah. Rabbits and big boob yeah. secret ladies. Yeah. That, I mean, it's all it's all good. It's not in custodies, right? No, it's not just. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yeah, but they got. Well, got... <laughs> they got the storm. Co- so, I think the people that play Age of Sigma, oft, quite often as well. Quite are often. often. All right, Paddy. <laughs> they're quite often. They're there because like, a lot of. Right, let's be honest, like, I'd say 90% of the people that I know that play Age of Sigma are there because they're fed up of Warhammer 40k. Uh, so they're, they're f- like, it's like when I don't play Call of Duty as much anymore, I've gone over to Fallout and Bioshock and Diablo. I, I've stopped playing the bad thing and playing something that makes me happy. I've, I've, honestly, I've stopped playing video games altogether right now, yeah. and I'm just hobbying instead, and I'm mm. happier. Yeah. Um, that's because I've taught... I've ta- the thing is, right, 40K and Call of Duty, the, the, the comparison is, is genuinely, you know, mm. it's quite shocking, actually, because it's quite fair. And it's where you... It's almost like you have these... There's things in both... And there's things in 40k, there's things in Call of Duty. We won't we won't dwell on Call of Duty because we are this is a hobby channel. But there's things in it that give you those dopamine hits, yeah. give you those satisfactions, and chasing those wins and chasing those hundred points and blah 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 blah. And often what I found is those dopamine hits are just enough to keep you hooked in. Yeah. Hence, COD can release a terrible game and be its best-selling version ever, and it is a terrible. The game's a shit state right now. Mm. And guess what? I'm still making fortunes off of microtransactions. And the thing is with 40k, it's in a place now where. Even your casual players that go to tournaments typically will have a relatively meta-built list. It will be yeah. quite optimised, even at the mid-tables. Yeah. You normally have to go low tables to find people with crazy lists that you would never normally see. Yeah. And so they're going, you know what? If I, and, I, and I get this, and I'm not criticising a single person for doing this. But what they're saying to themselves is, I want to go to, a, to an event for a weekend. I want to go to a major. I want to go to... Uh, beachhead, right? And I want to play six games of 40k over the weekend. What I don't want is to get my absolute poo pushed in all six games. So Mm. how do I avoid doing that? Well, I probably need a more optimised list. So what do I need to do for that? I go and buy the units that I need to make my more optimised list. Or, if I'm playing Custodies, I buy a different codex. That's what I do to get a more optimised list, right? For example. And so, at that point, what they're doing is they're using competitive 40k almost as your money generation. Mikey from Hellstorm did a stream today, and it, one of the things he said, I, I was watching it for a bit, I'm ashamed to admit, um, I lo- love him really, but <laughs> one of the things he said on his stream is, they're a publicly trading company. That, that Their job is to make money. The narrative and the rules are there to make them money. Yeah. It, they're a model company. They're not a game company. Writing rules isn't their, isn't their first profession. But, uh, Writing narrative isn't their first profession. Their first profession is making and selling plastic models. And guess what? They're fucking good at it. Yeah. Um, I, I listened to uh, White Scars book. So I was like, like I want to make a White Scars army. Like, I'm, like, it does, like, I'm still going to... Like, I, we hate on it, but I'm like, I'm like I still want to buy the things. Yeah. I still like. I still listen to a book or I look at some rules. Like, oh, I really like that. I'll do it. Like I played Paddy the other on Sunday, and it absolutely ruined me to a point where no other human could touch me afterwards. <laughs> right? It was. I. I. I honestly, there was a point where I thought I would cry. You know, <laughs> you looked. Considering we had a team building day yeah. with no cameras on, just to have fun. That first experience, I was like, "Joe's gonna go home." <laughs> I was like, I thought, like, I've, t- "I've had it. Like, I've had it like at tournaments before, where like turn one, I've got no army left." And also, I'm like, "I'm like, I'm not, sh- I'm not shit at this game. I'm not bad, right? I have zero control over what just fucking happened to me." 
<laughs> like Paddy was waiting in a dark corridor to do, yeah. to pull my pants down. He's already got the KY out. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I was like, I was like, this is like horrible. Yeah. But afterwards, we talked about what he wanted to do with his tournament army, and then I had my army in front of me, and then I still, I still pulled my phone out. Looked at my chaos list and I was like, well, if I take that out and put that in, and, and then I was like, I had the most horrible experience in my life, but I'm still building a list to do it again. Joe came to me and was like, can we, uh, can we get 20 more possessed? I was like, no, not with eight new members. I want 20 possessed. <laughs> if, we get to, uh, if we get to 100 members, Joe, I'll get you 10 possessed. I'll buy I'll you 10. Get 10. I'll buy you 10. Gal back. No, possessed. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which I will shout out. Pete, you legend, thank you so much for becoming a Hasir tier member. You beat me to it. That means he's chosen to spend all of his own money all by himself what to support lad. the channel. What a legend. If you guys aren't members of the channel and you're thinking about joining us, Hasir tier is the lowest tier required to get in Discord. And we set a very, very low bar just to get in Discord. And it's flat just to keep trolls out. Exclamation mark Discord if you are a member, if you've been gifted a member of the channel, if you're not in there already. Make sure you link your YouTube account to your Discord account uh, so it unlocks everything. If you don't do that, Discord looks really small. If you do do that, uh, Discord then recognises your YouTube membership to the channel and opens up all of the threads. Hmm. If you uh, become a Skull Team member, you get early access to our um, interview-based content that we've started very recently. There's currently two that are out to general public, which is James from C Studios and Josh from The War Hipster. Uh, going up in the near future will be Peachy, and it goes up to Skull Tier members and above five days early, basically. You get five yeah. days early access on those particular uh, those particular content pieces. If you upgrade to Yarl Tier, you get access to a free monthly giveaway for a Combat Patrol or Vanguard Stroke Spearhead box of your choice. You basically click it for free if you're a Yarl Tier member or above. Uh, you get entered into the giveaway and then the bot randomly draws one of you. And if a bot randomly draws one of you, you then win that box. And I get it shipped to you either by Element or by your local GW. So if you're in the US, for example, I can't ship it from Element. I ship it from GW. Yeah. Haskell tier members get behind the scenes photos and content on YouTube. Thanes get a private and exclusive WhatsApp-based community, which is a little bit more engaging with the team specifically. Kyle's in there, Joe's in there, I'm in there. And you can talk to us. Around, oh, Eddie's in there as well. You can talk to us. Um, Paddy and Brom don't like you lot, so they're not in there. Uh, if you want to then become an Acer member, that's our highest level of membership, which I made a long, long time ago thinking no one will ever be an Acer, and we have a few, and they're amazing. And when we start running events here, when it becomes Hobby House, or when we run events here, even in the studio, those people at Acer tier get free tickets. They don't pay for tickets because they're yeah. an Acer tier member. Okay? Mm. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I just thought I'd explain our little membership thing to you because there's a over the course of the AOS content, we have a lot of new people, a lot of yeah. names I haven't seen before. Mm. So yeah, a lot more tasteful nudes in the post. Yeah, a lot more tasteful nudes in the post. Yeah. Uh, so I did see oh, before I go to Super, I did see someone out there saying that like is is 30k a more enjoyable game than 40k? It is if you don't play competitively. Okay, it's, right. I, I didn't know 30k competitive was a thing. 30 the 30k competitive. So 30k. For fun, I think you find that people that play 30k tend to like the are there they're there for the narrative, as it were. Yeah, right. It's typically, a, it's it's a futuristic historical game. Y yeah, right? it's a historical war game in the 31st yeah. millennium. You're basically playing Black Library stories that you enjoy reading or listening to. You like I read I read this story about Night Lords fighting Dark Angel on the ship. I've got loads of own mortalis terrain. Let's do all infantry just smashing each other on space. You know, like, yeah, let's do that. Um, it, but it's all Space Marines versus Space Marines, but Space Marines with different flavour, you know? Yeah, um, slightly different flavour. But if you play competitively, it is an arms race. It's one hell of an arms race. Is but it? But the good thing about competitive in Horus Heresy, it is a lot easier to control than 40k. Yeah. Because in Heresy, if you exclude uh, the the Solar Auxilia and the Admech, it's all Space Marines and you go, I'm doing, and it, if like 2,000 points, if you're over 2,000 to 2,001 points, you can have a Primark. So if you go, I'm doing a 2,000 point tournament, no Primarchs, no Super Heavies, kind of thing. And then it's all based on percentages, like no more than 50% of your army can be this, or no more than 25% of your army can be that, you know? So it's a lot easier to control. And then every army, although like every army can, pick a right of battle, and that 
that allows you to take certain units which get certain benefits, but if you take those, you can't take other things. So for instance, if you've got a, an, an elite detachment, you can't take artillery, for instance. If you've got a, an all-tank army, you can't, like all your infantry must be in transport. Okay. Kind of thing. So it's a lot easier to control in that way. And the army still look narrative. But when you go competitive, there's a lot more big explosive things happening. Procrastinate says, Horus Horus competitive is a mood. Doom and gloom mostly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. well, so what have you got there? D cannons or like destroyer. I've got lances, you know. Yeah. Mr. Wigger says, when you say free tickets, does that include airline tickets from America to the event? I wish it did. Mm. I wish the channel was big enough and making yeah. enough money that yes, it did. I'm afraid the answer is no. You could suction cup yourself to the bottom of a plane. Oh, I, we don't advise. Yeah. We don't advise. You could, <laughs> like in the cartoons, run up to the plane with two plungers and be like, you know? We don't advise. We don't advise. But if you do it, it is free. <laughs> right. Uh... Thank you for it came. Oh no, Nostradamus, Dumba 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 Day. I'm convinced my I've convinced my 40k play group to switch to comp to from comp to crusade. We're all enjoying the game much more now. I've also got them tempted by AOS fourth. Good. Yeah. So what you've done there is you're let's play a fun version of this game. And what's happened is happened to us as well, where we've just started to embrace hobby as a whole. Yeah. Warhammer hobby. Yep in all the spectrum 100% um, because once you take the pressure of competitive away that, that arms race well, you're like I just want to bring models that I like we did slowly we did start to wander down the competitive path and I think part of the reason is because um, winning is addictive to be honest with yeah. you but the other reason is I, I had it in my mind for the longest time People, especially new people, new people that come to the channel to watch the content, they want to see the best. They want to see the best all the time. And I've come to realise that actually, I think for the majority of the audience, that's not true. Mm. And if you want to see the most optimised list and the most competitive, you go and watch your Art of War and you watch your Vanguard Tactics and that's fine. You can do that and they, they do those things yeah. and they'll show you the best attachment and they'll show you the best units in the best attachment. Beautiful, that's fine. Yeah. But actually, I think the majority of people don't actually care if it's well, the best thing well, in the world. So, it's like competitive 40k is not the reason why you started the hobby. No, normally no. no. Some people is. But some people no. it is. Like, some people are just like, I want to play a game that I can win. Uh, but some people go... Not tend to be like, I like big spaceships. And I cannot lie. I cannot lie. You know, I like, I like men in power armor. I like a man or woman in uniform. You yeah. know, like, I like. I bet you do. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like an orc riding a giant pig, you know? Yes, and I then do. be like, I could have an army of orcs riding pigs. That's called Southampton on a Saturday night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> called Empress Road. <laughs> like, um, I, like, you. It, people are drawn to this game because it's just big and stupid and stupid things are happening and the story is nuts. Yeah. You know, what have we got here? Well, space fascists beat up space communists with elves. Yeah. You know? And everyone, and, and there's elf magic yeah. and warp travel and that's all believable yeah. apart from female super soldiers. Yeah. And so then cool. people go, oh, are those models? What army is that? Yeah. And then they go, I can collect that army. And the people tend to go on the internet and they do find Art of War or Vanguard and they go, I, I want to start collecting um, Raven Guard. I really like emo space marines all in black, right? What, what do I do next? And they'll go, wow, you need 2,000 points, you need these characters in this unit, in this detachment, go. And you're like, but I don't like those models. Yeah. I want stealthy dudes doing stealthy shit, being yep. all emo, writing poetry. You know? <laughs> and, you, and what they don't have is someone go, well, if that's what you like, just buy the models that you like. Yeah. Do the things that you want to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I've had too many experiences with, with people as well who are, you know what, flat better at the game than me. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I want to build this army, and I want to actually be okay at tournaments, mm. and I want to be decent, but I want to use these units because they're my favourites. And they'll go, cool, what you want to do is buy all these units and build this army. I'm like, but it doesn't include the ones I wanted. We don't want to use them, they're rubbish. But I do want to use them because they're cool. Yeah. And, that, like, we, and we were going down that path of, let's make sure we show everyone the best stuff. Let's make sure we show everyone the most you know, optimised build. Mm. Um, and, and actually, I think that's bad for everybody. I think that's bad for the players. I think it's bad for the audience. I think it's bad for the game. Because typically what happens is, 
you end up in a situation where you are hyper optimized, and then between us on the table, we could normally look if we if we were honest with each other, Joe, we could normally look at it and in two turns go, no, who's winning this one? Mm. That's not good for content. No, like it wants to be close till the end. Yeah, that's good for content. Yeah, you don't right? you don't want a game where you just like you go first, you run into your opponent, and you table them, uh, especially for stream. Like if you if you tabled your opponent, turn one, and your opponent's like, cool, I've got four models left. We now need to kill three hours. It was, it's only fun if you're doing that against Eddie. Yeah. So, yeah. But it sometimes you deserve it. Yeah, um, absolutely. Which is all the time. So, yeah, so, if you go from chasing that meta to just playing with models that you like, what tends to happen is you go, well, I like those models. I want to build and paint those models. Yep. But that's not for the game that we play. Well, we could play that game if we have the models to play one, that game. One thing I will say, though, and I want to put this out here right now, right? Having read these articles, and we're reading them to you, and we're going through them with Joe, and we're, li we're sort of live reacting as best we can to most of these articles right now. Um, I say right now, over the course of the streams we're doing, right? I think the game looks really positive, and we're being very positive about the game. Uh, I'm aware of the word, I hate the word, but I'm aware of the word influences. Joe and I are two people who absolutely do, unfortunately, for some bizarre fucking strange reason, mm. influence people's decision making. Mm. And it will influence people to look at a new game system, to think about playing AOS 4, to go and buy certain units and models mm. and stuff. And if we review the Custodes book and tell you it's terrible, you might not buy it. If we tell you the Orc book's amazing, you might go and buy it. And we may have influenced your decision. One thing I do want to throw out there, this is slightly controversial considering the content we've been doing lately. If you are not a person who is monumentally flush with cash, I would hold off on diving deep into AOS stuff right now until the book is out. Yeah. Because I am, I have this very little niggling thought at the back of my mind, and it's tiny right now. It isn't, it isn't big, but it's there. My only slight little like niggle of trepidation, like I said to you earlier, that these are Warcom articles, and Warcom is there positive advertising? Yeah, I think it's like, I don't, like, the issue we've got, the thing that, that makes me not worried is that, obviously, 40k isn't dead. It has not been killed. Oh, no, 40k and is... Then I don't think, like, let's be honest, right? I know they're watching, and I don't want to say bad things about them in case they, like, phone us and stab us. Um, is that they have murdered Old World. Oh, they fucked Old World. Right. And they they and then like, uh, what's the he the heresy mini game? The not Titanicus. They killed that and then they replaced it with something else. Legion they, Imperialis. That's the one. But they smothered it with a pillow. Yeah. You know. Um, <laughs> you know they did yet. Yeah. Like they create these these side games and they're like buy it buy it buy it buy it and they're like you've bought it we're not going to support it anymore. You've yeah. Got your money off you fuck right yeah. now. I, I think with Age Sigma, they want, to, they need that retention. They, they do need the retention, but yeah. what, but what I'm, so I've said this a million times already. The best way in any in any industry whatsoever, with any company ever, the best way that you vote is you vote with your with your wallet, right? Yeah. It's simple as that. If AOS four comes out and the game looks beautiful and it's good and it works, go ahead, spend all your money, get involved in the game, enjoy it, buy an AOS army, and I'm hoping and I currently think that is what's going to happen. Okay. That being said, if AOS 4 comes out and we read it, there's a 22-page clarification document, a day one FAQ, and a monumental errata three months in because everything was fucked, don't buy it. If you're a 40k player currently, and you go, I'm looking at this because it's a better game, and it comes out balked, don't buy it. The problem is, if you all go and buy tons and tons and tons of AOS right now, and it comes out balked, we've already got your money at that point. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just, I don't want people to go, Liam and Joe say, Age of Sigma 4th edition is amazing, I've bought loads of models, and then it comes out, you're like, this is shit, why did you tell me? Because I don't want you to have that experience. Buy models that are sexy. If you're flush with cash and you've got loads of money, first of all, do what you want, of course, you go for it. Second of all, it's like gifting some memberships. Like Phil. McCracken <laughs> has gifted five gifted memberships. <laughs> I don't think his name's actually McCracken. Pete, the, the war gamer became a her We've done that already. Yeah, Pete, uh, Pete became a member here. Thank you. I got excited that a man with a tick became a member. Yeah. yeah. 40k medic has said, what does Joe think about Emperor's children getting an index? Oh, it's quite exciting, isn't it, I suppose? Well, this is interesting, right? right so, what, so if they get an index, right, I would assume that they're getting a um, formation, a detachment. Their own... 
an index. Yeah, an index yeah. attachment. Well, they have to. They have to have an attachment, yes, to, yeah. to work. To work. <coughs> they did say yeah. in the thing that, that they will be usable in the, the Chaos Space Marine Codex attachment. Yeah, well. they're going to get, in the early stages at least, yeah. they're going to get Space Marine, um, they're gonna get Space Marine um, chapter treatment, like yeah. Dark Angels. Yeah. Here's your detachment, and you can use all the ones in the Space Marine book. Yeah, so that's quite exciting, because obviously <coughs> it means that it does say, like, if you have to have everything in there, Lucius is going to be your Warlord, Noise Marines are going to be your troops, um, everything in the detachment has to be Sinesh, obviously. The good thing about now is you don't have to pay for your mark, which was a stab in the back for Sinesh, uh, Ember Children <coughs> in the last edition, because yeah. um, the Sinesh mark was way more expensive. Uh, I think I think it's cool. I think it's good. I, it might be a chance for them to update the rules for Noise Marines because they are terrible. So I think um, there's a lot of negativity about it on social yeah. media in general. I don't understand why. So I, I do, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and put a positive spin on it, right? Um, they're upset that they're going to get an index which just have Noise Marines and just have Lucius, and they're both old models and old sculpts, and they're not getting anything new, right? Now, let's look at this objectively, and rather than the impatient butthurt whinge babies on Twitter, right? let's look at this objectively. Yes, when this first comes out, what's going to happen is they've not put it in the Chaos Codex, right? which means at some point in the three-year life cycle of 10th edition, I would expect you will be getting a Emperor's Children Codex. Right? Yeah. You'll be getting your own book, which is a positive. First part of the positive spin. right? It's probably, if we're honest, going to be towards the end of the edition. Right? Almost definitely. And that's why they're bringing out an index as a stopgap. Because if it was two months away, it might as well not bother. Yeah. Might as well just leave it alone. But like, yeah, you can use it in the codex. And here's, here's just data sheet rules for Lucius and Noise Marines. Yeah. But they're giving, you a, they're giving you an index, so it's probably going to be late of the yeah. late 10th edition. Now, that sounds like a negative. Let me add another positive spin to that, right? Like I said last night on stream, and if you missed it, I'm going to go over it again. What happened with World Eaters, Thousand Sons, and Death Guard when they got their own codex? They lost access to basically everything that's generic Chaos Space Marines. When this index comes out, assuming that Emperor's Children are going to be the, the end of the edition, probably, what you could do if you wanted to is go and buy all the Chaos Space Marine units so you can run Emperor's Children. I'd strongly suggest you don't do that. Well, you could paint them not like Emperor's Children, but what you can do, well, thing, right, things that have stayed in Father Sons, Death Guard, World Eaters, right? Things that you could. This is not Joe's guarantee, but if you look at what we've currently got... Okay, go for it. Right? Rhinos? Yeah. Land Raiders? Mauler Fiends? Mauler Fiends? Forge Fiends? Forge Fiends. Hell Brutes? Hell Drakes? Hell Drakes. I know, Death Guard don't get Hell Drakes, I don't think. No. So you take the Hell Drake out, yeah. but you still get... Uh, you, you're definitely going to get Rhinos, Land Raiders, Hell Brutes. Yep. Right. Guarantee. Right? You could probably get Noise Marine. If you, if you really like Horus Heresy, or the idea of Horus Heresy, you buy Horus Heresy Land Raiders, Horus Heresy Contempt of Dreadnoughts and run them as Hellbroods, you buy Horus Heresy Land Raiders or Spartans, and you get the Cacophony, right? Either off eBay, Facebook, uh, or And you Forge build Rock. them under the bridge that you live under because you can't afford property after buying all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. But you've got an Emperor's Children army. There is a Lucius model for, from Forge World as well. So you basically build a Horus Hem Heresy Emperor's Children army, right? But it is completely usable in 40k. That's as far as I'd push it. Yeah, uh, what, I, what I think, and this is where sometimes Warcom lets themselves down, mm. uh, in my honest and humble opinion, because I think what they could have said was, this is an indicate. This is where sometimes I feel like they literally treat their fan base like cunts, right? So what they could say is, right? Of course, the reason why we're indexing Emperor's Children is because at some point in the future we will be releasing an Emperor's Children codex. It's yeah. obvious. We're not. We're not. None of us are stupid, right? We all know that's what's going to happen because that's exactly what happened with Khan and the Berserkers when they took him out of the Chaos Space Marines yeah. codex. We know what's coming. They don't need to tell us when. No. They have said, not anytime soon. Just be open and honest about it. And if you then apply your logic, what they've essentially potentially done is giving you a year to two years notice that your Emperor's Children Chaos Space Marine units, a la Raptors, Warp Talons, Havocs, Bikes, are probably not going to find well, their way into the codex. Thing is that, they've I, given you two years notice. I'm going to be honest with you, Liam. I'm going to make a Lucius. I've got 10 Noise Marines at home. I'm probably going to paint a Land Raider, probably going to do a Rhino, 
probably gonna do some pink chosen, probably gonna do a pink dreadnought and a pink rhino. And guess what, right? I've got Abaddon. So when the new codex comes out, what I've got is pink Chaos Space Marine units to just make my Chaos but, Space Marine army more colourful. But but do you remember what happened when the Codex for World Eaters came out, Jay? Do you remember Jack at Factorum? My I, friend Jack. Yeah. Do you remember Jack? Yeah. No, I don't know if Jack's watching. Jack mm. used to watch quite a lot. Jack is a legend of a human being and a monumental World Eaters fan. And I love him for the fact that he's such a World Eaters fan. And we had playtested the World Eaters Codex, so I knew it was coming. And I knew it was in the World Eaters Codex. And about a month, I think it was, before the World Eaters Codex... Um, was coming out, he was working on something in the region of 30 Raptors and 30 Warp Talons for his World Eaters. No. And we couldn't tell him. And I wanted to tell him, please don't build those, don't buy those, send them back, please, please, please don't do it, please don't do it. But, as always, I take my NDAs quite seriously, yeah. and I had to say nothing. And I'll be honest with you, it was, it was torturous, and I had real inner turmoil. Because mm. there's not a small amount of money. Right. Now, at this point, what they're telling you is, in a roundabout way, what they're saying is Emperor's Children are getting a codex. Yeah. So assuming, looking at the other three main Chaos Gods uh, and their main legions, you're not going to get all that stuff. Yeah. So don't, in the next two years, don't go buying Havocs and when they give you your Emperor's, uh, Emperor's Children codex, be like, what, yeah. do, what do you mean I can't if, use them? Right, if you do, I would say, if you do it now, because you want do a bit of hype, because you want a bit of hype, we love hype, we love excitement, we like modelling stuff, just know that when... That book comes out, your Emperor's Children Army is going to become an Emperor's Children Army and a pink Chaos Space Marine Army. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you're going from one army to two armies. Yeah. Right? For reference, by the way, six o'clock Wednesday stream, absolute fail. 14 members. What's well, that number? We've got a good number of people watching. Yeah, but 14 members. And what's the number of Super Chats? 23 pounds? Dinner time, innit? It won't pay for the electricity that we've used to do yeah. the stream show. <laughs> it just won't. Read the super chats. I need, I need. Are you going to the bathroom? Going for, You're going to mute yourself. I'm going to skip to the list. There's none. You've done it all. There's one at the bottom. Jorfin, thank you for the gifted membership. You're a hero. That's everything, Jay. There's no other. Nothing else for me to oh, talk about. Uh, see what Warcom's got on it. It's got. It must have something. Well, yeah, I've just, I've just, I've just, I've just read it out. Yeah, but there must be something else. Let's do like three posts a day. <laughs> All facts given out by Joe are subject to the same terms and conditions for factual correctness as Luce's big book of facts. Fact. That is a fact. Playing it safe to buy nothing for Emperor's Children until the codex actually comes out, if we're honest. Uh, it's exactly what you should do, Garcia, 100%. This is, this is like, at this point, I feel like without actually being open about it, they've given people a lot of notice, and I think that's quite positive. Like, I'm really behind that. Like, that's really, really good. So, um, what I'd like is them to be like, hey, we're just letting you know there is a codex coming out. So, just, if you make purchases, you've been warned, right? I like that. It's like, people were talking the other day about the fact that in AOS, they're potentially bringing out a new battle tome for this new chaos stuff, right? Whatever it's called. I can't remember the name of it. And people are like, you're bringing out a new, a new codex or a new battle tome when you're telling us about a new edition. But at least you know about the new edition. So if you choose to buy that, you're making an informed decision rather than... Uh, buying the book and then being told a month later that the book is no longer going to be of use because they're indexing everything for a new edition. And I think that's positive on the whole. Anywho, some of you have become legends immediately. Uh, the Mini Creative, thank you so much for the gifted membership. You are a fucking legend. Thank you so much. Uh, Baron283, thank you for the one gifted. You are a legend. Thank you so much. I can't, sorry, I can't afford to gift more. You're amazing. Thank you so much, dude. Corne Ed, however, thank you so much for five gifted memberships up to 21. This is a bit of dark ice, thank you. It's been a monumental... I was like, maybe this is a new time we can stream in the future if people like it, etc. Uh, maybe early, earlier is better, I don't know. Apparently not. Absolutely, and it panics me because we've got no streams tomorrow. So if you're holding on to gift memberships for tomorrow, I don't, we've got no streams. Just saying, right? I play Emperor's Children when the new codex comes out. My existing models just pivot over to being creations of bio easy. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I still feel like you should be open about the models that are, getting, that are going away instead of saying it's in a roundabout way. I, no, Sean, I agree. But notice is better than no notice at all, at least, even if it's a roundabout, right? But I, I'm with you. They should be. I think they should be. I have campaigned for a while behind closed doors for a little bit more openness and honesty with the audience. I often feel like Warcom comes across as this horrifically... Uh, condescending, hey, nonsense type writing thing that exists. Like, every time, like, 
the amount of times on, it's not just Walk On Either, by the way, it's the social media team in general. The amount of times you see on Facebook or Twitter or something like that, and they go, we don't know anything about this, but there might be some news coming soon. Like, fuck off. Stop I, being I, condescending I, if, pricks. If there's news coming later, I find that Games Workshop should just have a policy of, like, we're not going to mention it at all until we say something about it. Yeah. But... Silence, Bernard, thank you for the gifted membership. You're a hero. We've got mm. up to 22, Joe. 22? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I blame lethargy from eating too much food. Do you? Yeah. Well, we, I, we need to go in like five minutes because we've got to do some driving. Oh, yeah. Yeah. To Eddie's house. Basically. Yeah. Got to break his legs. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. Mm. Anywho, back to the stream topic. Thank you, thank you, people, for the, those, that, those that did gift. Um, you people yeah. are amazing. I, I would say about AOS, if you're thinking about getting into it, just buy models you like. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. I've got. Um, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, if you're like, I'm, I'm not gonna listen to them and wait for the edition. I'm gonna buy anyway. Just buy shit you yeah. like. I've, I've got a, a Slaves Darkness army that I've been working on in the background. My favourite models are Warriors of Chaos, Chaos Knights, Chaos Lords, Demon Princes. And those are all the models I've got. I don't care about the other stuff. Because they just look badass. They're everything that Warhammer Fantasy represents to me. When I think about old Warhammer Fantasy, like if, I, if there's a model that represents that whole range, it's the Chaos Warrior. Just big, beefy, army, armoured dude with horns, big shield, and either a mace or a sword. He just walks over and goes, Dead! Yeah. Uh, yeah. Snow. Flag. I love your mind. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> just, love your mind. Yeah. Never changed, Jay. It's, it's just, yeah, so it's just, oh, they're almost big, oh, just angry dudes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just great. And that's why I want my. So I've gone, that's the army I want. Those are what I have. I don't know if it's going to be good in the next edition, but I'll have what I want. I'm building, currently at home, some Stormcast, whilst also painting some Stormcast, whilst also building some Lumineth. Hmm. And I've bought some Nighthaunt. And all of my AOS-based decisions so far have been 100% made on models. Yeah. And nothing more. Hmm. I went Stormcast originally because they had dragons. Yeah. And then I found that some of the more recent Thunderstrike armor type stuff is really fucking nice. Hmm. So I bought loads of foot infantry as well. When I started buying my Stormcast, my intent was nothing but dragons. Hmm. I'm going to have a, an eight model army of just dragons. Hmm. And I have loads of Stormcast. Uh, Lumineth, I don't care what people say about the llamas and the cow stuff. I actually think it's super cool. I think it's like really high elf whilst having a very Games Workshop Warhammer arc slapped on the edge of it. So it's not quite high elf. So yeah. it can be. I love it. I think it's cool. And then Nighthorn, the ghost models for Nighthorn are just beautiful, even yeah. if there isn't a huge model range. So I, I have no idea what any of it does. Yeah. No idea what any of it, literally no idea what any of it does at mm. all. You know? I've also got some Sylvaneth stuff, because tree people, tree people are fucking cool. Tree people are cool. And the more recent stuff where you've got like the spirit, like the tree revenants and stuff, the spirits are, oh. What I'd like to oh. see from, not Sylvaneth, I'd like, what my favourite models from Wood Elves were War Dancers and Way Watchers. Like the court, like the elves with the the leafy capes and the boat, they look because they're like proper like sinister looking dudes. Yeah, I really, I they were my favorite. I'd like to see a bit of that. Yeah, and and new dark elf corsairs, mm. elf pirates. Okay, cool. Anyway, banging. Uh, well, I'm, again, we've read the article. I'm super positive about the rules. Um, let us know what you think in the comment section below after the fact. If you have read the rules yourself, or if you at least follow along at the start. Uh, so far, so good for Age of Sigmar rules. Yes. We had the bad news. We had the nuking of a whole chamber for the uh, Stormcast and the going away of Sacrosant, the Sacrosant chamber. We also lost some other stuff in some other factions. It's sad, but they're keeping it fresh. I get why they've done it. Again, at least they've let you know about that. Three-ish yeah. months, four-ish months before Honestly the edition God, comes out. The way people have gone on about um, cowmen, what are they called? Beastmen. You would assume that that was the best-selling army in the game. Decisions are made based on statistics normally. Yeah. If they're getting rid of it, it's because it's not selling. No one's buying it. Yeah. And, and, I, and you got to think, right, it's a new edition. The main army in the box set is Stormcast, which means Stormcast, again, a whole bunch of new stuff, right? And that stuff needs to go somewhere. And as a business, they go, that's not selling, off it goes, that's not selling, off it goes. 
We've made space. How, how many models were old models in Leviathan? None. None of them. None of them. How many models were old models when they did Dominion? None of them. None of them. Yeah. When they do these starter launch boxes, every model is normally new. Mm. And it's normally a relatively sizable force as well. Yeah. Right? And then those models tend to come out as individual kits afterwards. They do, yeah. So, like, it's got to go somewhere, you yeah. know? And, and let's be honest, right? Those Beastmen kits are old. They are old, yeah. Right? It's like when people say, don't spoil Star Wars, the original trilogy for me. I've not watched it. You've had time. Jay, right. what's your thoughts on the Arnold Cav model release for Metal Earth Strategy Battle Game? They're lovely, they are. <laughs> I really like them. I, um,. <laughs> they're lovely they they're are they're lovely they are yeah um, I like the iron ore stuff it's really cool I'm a big fan of the the Highlander guys they did um, I, just, I think the uh, plastic the, the, the plastic infantry were okay um, they were basically just plastic versions of um, Lake Town mm. militia but the Lake Town stuff was beautiful Lake Town stuff is quite well yeah I, the thing I find, I find about Middle Earth strategy battle game or whatever it's called battle game is that it looks like a great game. It's just a great game I have zero time for. Yeah, no, I mean, the games, I've got a lot of people that play it say, best game system they've ever released, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Do you know what? If they gave, if they took Rohirrim and they, they gave them to the same sculptors, if they had to keep them Lord of the Rings accurate, but the same sculptors as the sculpt AOS cavalry, fucking hell, take my money. Yeah, the, the scale I always found really weird because they went for this, like, miniature, like, weird 20 mil scale didn't they yeah so but it was all in proportions yeah so it was it was the right scale but really small i yeah. found it really odd and and my god did those horses ankles snap all the time no you'd never see any of those horses on the grand national <laughs> go after the first jump. <laughs> anyway <laughs> right you people have been mostly phenomenal for taking part it's a shame we've only got the 20... Oh, no, there's another one. Thank you, Dax and Des, for one gift to membership. 23 gift to membership. 23 gift to memberships. This is an all-time record low for the stream. But we did throw this in randomly. We, it was a random stream. We didn't stream. tell anyone. Well, we did. Yesterday. All day. Did we? And Monday I said it as well. I was and last week I said it too. I was listening. Neither were they. Evidently. Well, these people here who were here Well, now. you can't say that. 230 people watching, Jay. Yeah. 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 The other um, 30,000 people. Don't bother. Didn't get the memo. Don't turn up, yeah. uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight anyway, chat. You people are amazing. If you're like, oh, I should have gifted some memberships, you can do it right now, uh, but we're going to go off air. Or there is still the PayPal link in the video description mm -hmm. below if you really want to use that. But thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, like I said, there'll be no streams tomorrow. Um, Joe and I are away. There'll be no streams tomorrow. I will be back on Friday uh, with 40k after dark in the evening. And at this rate, I'm probably going to have to do some bonus hobby streams over the weekend to try and make up for tomorrow. Because I was like, oh, maybe we can get ahead before Thursday. Apparently not. Because not only did we not get ahead before Thursday, but we've also murdered Wednesday's numbers too. But you know what? It's fun. I'm excited about Age of Sigma 4th edition. I think, I think you'll make it all up on Friday night. I don't think we will. I don't but, think we will. Yeah. But thank you so much for watching, you beautiful human beings. If you haven't already smashed that like button, we'll see you in the next one. Bye, have a wonderful time. <laughs>